Hello everyone, welcome to Kalam's answer writing session. So today we have a question. It looks like a very lengthy question. And like I said yesterday, UPSC does try and confuse the student and try to break the minds of the student by giving such lengthy answers. Not to worry, we'll think about what this particular question says. This is not an easy answer per se because this this question demands that the student knows in and out of the various commission and how they function and the concept of an umbrella human rights commission. So let us first read the question and make a sense of what it is trying to tell us. Let us get a sense of what this question is trying to tell us. This question has been asked in 2017 by the way. So the multiplicity of various commissions for the vulnerable sections. So is probably talking about national commission on scheduled tribes, national commission on scheduled castes, National Commission on Minorities, on Women, and so on. So, multiplicity of various commissions for the vulnerable sections of the society leads to problems of overlapping a jurisdiction and duplication of functions. Is it better to merge all the commissions into an umbrella human rights commission? So, if you look into this question, these four lines are basically asking you only one part, as in there is this is a single themed question, sadly. And it is asking you to asking you to talk about whether you 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 should be merging all these vulnerable sections ka commissions into an umbrella human rights commission. Now this is a dangerous question. I'll tell you all why. This question is not a multiple part question. As in usually, if the question asks you two or three sub parts, you can address each of the sub parts, and even if you mess up with one of the sub parts. The other two subparts are going to take care of the third subpart, which you have not done well. But that is not the case here. This is a single themed question, which is asking you to discuss or debate the idea of an umbrella human rights commission. So you have to be very smart about it. And in order to write a balanced answer, you have to definitely talk about the pros and cons of it. So first, you have to argue your case about the positives of having an umbrella human rights commission. And then probably you have a separate side heading talking about why it is not wise to have an umbrella human rights commission, and you balance your answer in the conclusion, or you argue your case about having a human rights commission, an umbrella human rights commission, and towards the end, probably in the conclusion, talk about some loopholes that could be there in having such an umbrella human rights commission, and how you should want to tackle that issue. And you could do all of this in a four or five lined conclusion. These are equally good strategies. I would prefer that you set up as many subheadings as possible, not too many, but maybe three at the best, and four if the question itself has three or four subparts. But because this particular question is a single themed question, at max you can have two or three subheadings. So, what is the introduction, body, and conclusion of this particular question? So, firstly, we have established that the commissions it is talking about is the NCSC, NCST, NCBC, National Commission for Women, National Commission for Minorities, and so on. These are the bodies that are there. What is the idea or the essence behind setting up each of these bodies? Why are we setting up these bodies? We are setting up these bodies in order to protect the vulnerable. Ideally, if you look at a society, some people do well for themselves. Economically, politically, socially, but there are some communities who are not able to take care of themselves, especially the scheduled tribes, tribes from the remote areas, or the scheduled castes who have faced the historical oppression. The scourge of historical oppression has been faced by these people, and you have the differently abled, and there is a half of population which is constantly. Disparaged or discriminated, which is the women, women, women folk of this country. So all these sections face a lot of trouble. In order to support these these sections of populace, in order to uplift these sections of society, we have set up these different commissions. Like for example, what does NCST do? NCST looks into the different safeguards that are there for the tribal population. And whether these safeguards are being implemented or not, and if they are not implemented, it submits a report to the government, as in it submits a report to the president or somebody, which gets laid before the parliament, 
and the parliament gets to know about the problems of this particular section of the society that is the main job of this ncsc and ncst and so on they take care of this particular sections of the society so there are several other commissions like we have seen so when you have so many commissions is it leading to a situation in which they are overlapping in terms of their work is it leading to a situation in which there is duplication of work which is leading to inefficiency and if that is the case how do we address it should we have a common human rights commission like for example ncsc takes care of the interests of the scheduled caste what if that particular person who has a lot of grievances is a woman is the issue going to be taken by the ncsc or is the issue going to be taken by the national commission of women or by the national human rights commission do you see the point there is a conflict there is an overlap between these three bodies in terms of their functions because they are trying to address a single individual who is this particular woman that woman is related to ncst it is he she is probably related to human rights commission and she is definitely related to national commission for women so there is some overlap of jurisdiction this i am speaking in loose terms so i so you get a gist of what the problem is here so in such a situation can we have an umbrella human rights commission so what is my introduction body conclusion going to be in this particular answer so in the introduction i am going to talk about the multiplicity of various commissions i'll probably first identify the different commissions that are there and their mandate so that i'm telling the examiner that i know what exactly i'm talking about okay moving forward then let us look at what the body has to be in the body before i talk about having an umbrella human rights commission i am going to talk about the problems of overlapping jurisdiction and duplication of functions because that is the thesis statement of the question the question is leading to the as in the first statement is leading to the question of umbrella human rights commission by telling us that there are certain problems there is a problem of overlapping jurisdiction and duplication of functions so i am going to talk about the problems first and then i'll talk about the advantages of having an umbrella human rights commission and then probably if i have enough space i'll set up a subheading about the pitfalls that could be there when you have a super regulator like an umbrella human rights commission and then i appropriately conclude my answer or if i don't have enough space i'm going to merge that criticism of an umbrella human rights commission with the conclusion itself and finish off my answer and immediately move on to the next answer see you have to keep one thing in mind when you write your answers your answer the one particular answer shouldn't be the best answer what i'm trying to say is if you write two or three very good answer or stupendous answer answers it doesn't make much much sense the idea is to write above average answers for all the 20 questions and that is how you maximize your marks you have to keep that in mind so you have to quickly move from one side heading to another side heading appropriately conclude conclude your answer and immediately move forward to the next question so let, let's see the sample answer and see what he has done so here's the sample answer so he is talking about vulnerable sections so this is a good practice the question is related to vulnerable sections of the society so he is clearly identifying for the examiner like a layman about what these vulnerable sections include they include the women children scs sts differently abled etc and then he is saying what they face a plethora of problems owing to historical reasons patriarchy and discrimination so he is not only identifying the vulnerable sections he is also moving forward and giving a sense of why they are facing these problems he is talking about patriarchy he is talking about discrimination so in one introduction in, in probably three or four lines he is talking about these two important things alternatively you could have started out by talking about human rights commission also but that is not a relevant way of doing it in you could also talk about article 21 and how it provides dignity of life to the citizen of the country 
and in order to give justice to this several commissions are there to take care of certain sections of the society that is one way to do it you can add article 21 you could talk about article 25 to 28 which is for minorities as in the religious minorities you could also introduce 29 and 30 there are different ways of introducing your answer one way is the definitional approach which he is doing here second is the current affairs approach in which you talk about the current affairs issue which is relevant to this particular question but that cannot probably done here be done here so he did, took into the de, he took to the definitional approach which is fine moving forward he is talking about various commission and he is identifying their functions he is talking about ncscs ST, ncsts nhrc national commission for minorities and women and he also mentioned somewhere that NCST is related to protecting tribals, NCSC is related to reviewing the safeguards of SCs, this is not STs, sorry, don't make such silly mistakes, it is going to decrease the image you build up in the minds of the examiner. So NCSC is for reviewing safeguards for the SCs. So he is giving various commissions, he has identified the vulnerable sections, so far he has warmed up his answer to the demand of the question. Now he is talking about the problems of the overlapping jurisdiction and the duplication of work. So what are the problems that we face? Firstly, the atrocities against tribals are looked into by NHRC as well as the National Commission on Tribals. So this in a sense is related to the example that I have given some time ago in relation to a tribal woman. So if there is a tribal person and his rights are violated as in if some atrocities are committed against him or if he faces discrimination who is going to take care of this particular issue is it the NCST or the NHRC <coughs> because both of them can do it so there is an overlapping jurisdiction and what happens often on the ground level I mean so sometimes the same complaint is lodged with one or more of these bodies like for example if there is an atrocity committed on a tribal person. So this person goes and lodges the complaint in NCST and then he does it in the Human Rights Commission and if this person is a woman it is also getting lodged in the National Commission for uh, uh, Women. right? So there are several places on which the same complaint is being lodged and this is being processed and not just a single person. If a particular section as in if a section wants to set up a petition for something and if if a section of ST population they want to set up a petition for something in relation to their rights they do it in relation to NCST they also send it to NHRC okay and if they are related to women they also send it to NN National Commission for Women so the same complaint is going processed by three bodies in this situation think about it this way what if you have a single body what if you have a single body which can process all these things there is going to be more coordination in terms of effort and men and material so that is the idea behind having an umbrella human rights commission right so moving forward the overlapping of work is primarily because the upliftment motive being common to all these bodies so this is a general point which is usually given when you have less to talk about as in when you have less solid points to write so what he's trying to essentially say here is the following Look, all these commissions have the single motive, has the same motive as in they want to uplift the human dignity of a person. And because this is common to all the all these commissions, so there is some overlap is what he is trying to tell us. Not a very good point, but it is a gap filler. Let's move. Next, he says that sometimes overlapping jurisdiction prevents work from getting done at all. And how does he mean this particular point? So the state bodies believe that the center is going to take up this issue so I won't take it and sometimes the central body feels that the corresponding state body will take up the issue let's say if an issue has taken up in Rajasthan so the center will th central body will think central uh, commission will think that the state counterpart is going to take care of the issue the state counterpart thinks that the center is probably going to take care of it sure there is clear delineation as in clearly it has been written in the rules that the center takes up so and so things and the state takes up so and so things but on ground level these are the problems that crop up and in next in addition to this multiplicity of bodies prevents adequate fund dispersal by the government to any of these bodies 
naturally when you have too many bodies if you want to give out funds to these bodies you can't do justice to any of these bodies you are funds you are basically fund staffed you already have to take care of the welfare expenditure and if you want to give money to for the maintenance of these bodies and for their functioning and for them to take care of their own responsibilities you won't be able to do it because you don't have so much of money so you give thinly spread out funds to each of these bodies so this is another problem they face in addition to this when the bodies are weak there is a problem of politicization so that is another problem which these national commissions have been plagued with for some time that has also been pointed out by this person so he has written five nice points some of them were average and below average points but three or four good points were there now let's move forward and see what he talks about when he says that there is a creation of an umbrella nhrc so firstly this is going to lead to efficiency because of unity in funds functions and functionaries good and secondly it can have branches for women children etc under the same parent nhrc so this is what i have been talking about a few minutes ago like for example all these functions of women tribal etc if they are placed under the same umbrella body as in there is a separate branch for women under the same body there is a separate branch for children and so on but because these branches are part of the same parent organization there is a chance that there will be extra coordination and how do we bring about this coordination especially by rotating the personnel you cannot easily rotate between ns ncsc and ncst but before but if these are under the same nhrc same umbrella human rights commission the head of this body can easily shuffle people between one branch to another branch and this is going to increase the coordination and secondly it is also going to increase the efficiency because this will lead to a exchange of good standard operating procedures from one branch probably related to women to another branch which is probably ncsc or ncst related branch so so what he is talking about is to have a have a pyramid like structure in which you have the human rights part at the top and at the bottom there are several branches one related to women one related to children one related to uh, national uh, one related to scheduled tribes one related to different differently able people and so on that is what he is talking about in addition to this it synchronizes the data present with each of these commissions district level and state level bodies so these commissions their state counterparts the district counterparts they all have a lot of data so all this data can be synchronized under a single platform and the, and as we all know data is very important these days using this data we can improve our policy making and see what can be done and launch new schemes if necessary in order to improve this particular populace moving forward he says that it will be a considerably powerful tool to protect the rights of minorities granted by the constitution and then he is listing down the articles article 15.4 15.3 and so on uh, so much of listing is not necessary some amount of enriching your answer is fine but clearly listing these down like this probably is going to set off the examiner because the examiner will have to think in his mind what is what is article 15.4 and so on if you want to write down articles uh, write them down at, at least in some measure 15.4 is what and so on article 21 ko likho nahi likho zyada fark nahi padta hai because everybody knows it is related to right to life but article 15.3 15.4 when you write you probably have to explain a bit moving forward he says however care should be taken that this umbrella body does not become too big to manage enough flexibility should be provided for its efficient function so the way he started his answer overall if i look into the answer what i see is that he is definitely rooting for an umbrella nhrc so he is nowhere talked about the problems of having an umbrella nhrc so that amount that balance has been lost in the answer so what i recommend is to have a separate subheading a small subheading which has which talks about the problems of having an umbrella nhrc so if you write 
in favor of nhrc umbrella nhrc and against umbrella nhrc you might want to ask me what are you exactly trying to write that is what i am trying to tell you whatever you are arguing if you want to argue in favor write five or six points under it but write two or three points against it that is how you basically create balance and lean towards your argument you can't present a one sided case to the examiner this is my humble suggestion so i want you to write especially in the comment section about the problems of having an umbrella nhrc i'll list some of them down so what is the difference between a super regulator and having different organizations as in if you want to set up a uh, set up an umbrella nhrc under which there is a branch for women there is a branch for an ncsc and ncst is it really different from having so many different commissions that is one thing that we can point out and secondly as he has shown in the conclusion if this body becomes too big to manage then it won't be able to do any good and so on so write other points which are somewhat against having an umbrella an umbrella in hrc and now we will move forward and look into tomorrow's question so tomorrow's question is related to simultaneous elections simultaneous elections to the lok sabha and the state assemblies will limit the amount of time and money spent in electioneering but it will reduce the government's accountability to the people so on the one hand the question is say, saying that it will decrease the time and money that is spent in electioneering as such on the other hand it is going to reduce the government's accountability so it is asking you to discuss both these aspects of this question slightly tricky but it can be answered if we read the read out the question properly properly and segregate the question into the different subheadings and write an answer we will address this tomorrow thank you